We have U20 World Coach Emma Randall. We're at the OTC. You guys are in the middle of U20 camp. Um, what are you guys focusing on this week before you head into Bulgaria? Uh, at this point, we're just making some small changes. The women are super talented and, and ready to go. We're making just little subtle changes that are going to prepare them um, and make them feel confident as they walk into battle against some foreign opponents. You've only been around this team a short time, but what are your thoughts looking at them? Uh, they're ready to scrap. You know, they went over to Spain. They got some matches. They felt those international women uh, were here in camp working with our senior national team as well, just trying to soak up knowledge, work with some of the best people in the world, get those different feels. Um, and understand how to hand fight to get back to our offense to get into our mainstay so that we're ready to attack no matter what. You've been a national coach before working primarily with the developmental age group. So what does the U.S. have at this age that maybe some countries either can't keep up with or maybe don't have? <laughs> I think we're very fortunate to have the support of our states, uh, especially as we're moving towards high school sanctioning and getting all, all of our states sanctioned. We have tons of college opportunities to allow these women to continue wrestling as they get ready for the Olympic stage. Um, I think that development system is, is improved so much from my beginning of my times in 2012 with uh, USA Wrestling until now. The growth is tremendous. The opportunities are tremendous. The amount of people who are in those corners for the women cheering them on, supporting them, showing them high level technique um, and providing them uh, competition and training opportunities with other elite women uh, and male athletes I think is incredible and it's unique and um, you know we have a country that's so large uh, compared to a lot of other countries so it, sometimes it makes it hard for good uh, talented athletes to wrestle against each other but we're finding ways to make it work and we're invested in this system. Yeah you've been on this journey of promoting women's wrestling for quite a while can you just talk about what you're doing now and kind of how you've seen the sport grow around you? Yeah, right now I am the women's coach at the NYC RTC and I also am the women's head coach for Columbia University. Um, I am a member of the Division One Women's Wrestling Committee um, and so really my role, whether it's at the RTC, whether it's at Columbia or D1, is like providing opportunities for women, letting them know that there's a, a next level that's available, whether the development age group, whether they're college age group. Um, not all the colleges have a ton of support and so if there's a woman who wants to pursue a competition or a training camp, um, and if we can help them out by providing a ride, by sharing a room, by doing different things to help them get to that next level and, and achieve their goals, that's what we want to do. And so advocating, creating opportunities, sharing space, welcoming people into our group and, and not so much worrying about like what's best for us, but what's best for the sport, what's best for um, everyone's growth. It's a bit on the spot, but how can people get involved to kind of help this cause? Yeah, uh, you can donate to our organization. Uh, Division One Women's Wrestling helps support women with uh, competition opportunities, taking them to college opens. Uh, we also help give them singlets because not all of the clubs have singlets. Uh, we help them understand how to make a budget, how to make bylaws, how to create club leadership. Um, you can do that. You can also just follow us on Instagram, uh, like and share and spread our messages. We're always putting out information on infographics on like how many women are actually wrestling in the sport, uh, what college opportunities exist, what college opportunities are still evolving, what RTCs are welcoming uh, young women into their rooms and making opportunities available. And so just being educated, being an advocate, if you have the means to donate, that would be amazing. Um, I think the sport could use each of us to stand up and be an ally. And so we're all doing our parts in little ways. A little bit of whiplash of this interview. I'm going back to worlds. Um, for these these athletes, what is some advice that you would give them? As some of them might be entering their first world level tournament. Yeah, it's it's a, a big jump, and I think that requires a lot of courage. And so, just owning what got them here, owning their success, owning their technique, and being confident in themselves, um, and really embracing it. Right. Uh, sometimes we build up our opponents to be someone. Uh, who's better than us, more experienced than us, when really we don't know this person and uh, we don't know ourselves truly. And so if we're giving the best version of ourselves, open to trying, open to giving it everything that we have, we're courageous when we walk on the mat, um, regardless of the score, we're continuing to attack and, and owning the center. I think uh, that's when we showcase our best self. And so my, my advice to the women would be com be confident, right? Own your stuff and, and own the mat and um, own your journey too. And last question, you're back coaching on a world stage. What is What do these opportunities mean to you personally? Uh, it's great, you know, it's kind of like coming back home. I spent six years here um, to be able to hang out with Terry, who's like my mentor uh, and friend. Uh, it means a lot to me to learn from Jess and Katie um, and from the rest of our coaching staff is a wonderful opportunity to meet these young women and see the growth and the opportunities and hear their stories and, and share a piece of their experience it means a lot. Um, and I'm excited, I'm looking forward and I'm, I'm grateful. Cool, thanks Emma. Thanks Taylor.